Voyager 1 is alive and it stopped talking gibberish and it started communicating back with Earth again. Hey everybody, welcome back. Much Adventure here. Today I want to talk about um, Voyager 1. It's alive. Check out this article right from um, JPL, right from NASA. NASA's Voyager 1 resumes sending engineering updates to Earth. This is awesome. So last, I, I want to say in November, I think right here, yeah, in November... Um, if you guys were following the Voyager 1 at all, it kind of started just talking gibberish and sending back unusable data. Um, and the, the team didn't really have any idea what's going on. And of course, the Vo Voyager 1 being like 24 million kilometers away, um, they didn't know what was going on, right? So basically what they did was they figured out in March, um, right here, is that they figured out one of the computers. So there's three onboard computers on the Voyager 1. And they figured out one of them, which is called the Flight Data Subsystem, um, which is responsible for packaging science and engineering data before it's sent to Earth, um, is was dead, I guess, basically. A single chip storing um, the FDS memory, um, including some of the software code, isn't working. So, because the code on the chip, 24 billion kilometers away, wasn't working... Um, it wasn't sending science back properly. So what they had to do was they actually had to go in there and they ended up, um, where is it here? I think they took out, yeah, they started singling out the code responsible for packaging the spacecraft's engineering data. So they sent that code to a new location in the FDS memory on April 18th. Um, a radio signal takes 22 and a half hours. That's crazy. 22 and a half hours to reach Voyager 1. Uh, which is 15 billion miles. Yeah, 24 billion kilometers from Earth. So that is how they did it. Then they heard back on April 20th. They saw the modification worked. For the first time in five months, they've been able to check the health and status of the spacecraft. Um, absolutely crazy to me. This, I mean, look how happy these guys are. Can we open this? Can we get this bigger? Look at the joy. Look at the sheer joy of these guys. Um, what are they eating, by the way? What do we got here? We have some uh, some elongated donuts, and we got some looks like a coconut one. We got a, some jelly filled in there. To me, that doesn't even look like a donut. There, that looks like a, a pastry of some kind. But anyways, they're happy. They're excited. What do we got over here? We got a little. Uh, we got a chocolate cover. <laughs> they're happy. It's funny to me. Um, obviously, the average age of this room too, right? I mean, this. When did this uh, Voyager launch? I think forty some odd years ago. So like. I would be shocked if, uh, you know, some of these people must be there since it launched, basically. What do they got on this board? Let's check that out. Yeah, it's above my pay grade, I think. Uh, anyways, that's so cool. It's, it's just, to me, it's such a mind-blowing concept to think that we launched this spacecraft. Um, I want to be sure the, the age of 46 years ago. We launched it over 46 years ago. Voyager, also, by the way, Voyager 2 is totally fine. Still returning data. It's still totally fine. Uh, Voyager 1 was the one that was affected. But launched 46 years ago, and it's still in space today. To me, that's mind-blowing. And then, then, and then what's even crazier is that we can still send like software updates. 24 billion kilometers away, we can send a software update. An update a 46-year-old computer. Mind-blowing. I mean, that's truly truly mind-blowing um the other thing just randomly is you know I, I was just i saw this picture right of voyager and you know every time i see these pictures of these uh these like interstellar spacecrafts i always think of a virus have you ever seen a close-up picture of a virus i was looking at these check these out like this what is it you know what i mean like these viruses obviously this is like a I don't want to say that's not a real photo, but I don't know. It's obviously manipulated somehow. Um, but all these viruses, you know, and you play enough Kerbal Space Program, and it's like they start looking like lunar landers. You know what I mean? Look at that. Look at that one. Uh, it's so interesting to me. It really is. And then you look at like a picture of Voyager, right? And it's like, are we sending a back, essentially a bacteria into interstellar space? Crazy. Uh, the other crazy thing to think about is that if we developed, um, let's check out the Reddit comments because this guy said it better than I'm going to be able to say it. So uh, Voyager 1 is traveling, let's see here, it's traveling at 
thousand miles per hour. Speed of light is six hundred and seventy-one million miles per hour. Uh, long story short, if we could accelerate to one one hundredth of the speed of light in the future, we could catch up to Voyager. Imagine that. How that is not already a Star Trek episode? My, uh, your guess is as good as mine. But yeah, really, what do you guys think about uh, Voyager? Voyager one and and just a fact. I mean, if you read more of these Reddit Reddit comments, right? It's a work of scientific art. We'll never see it again. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, we pulled off IT support millions of miles away uh, in the dark with the only possible communication being in code. Yeah, exactly. That's what's that's what's insane. Like, what code is this thing even running on, right? Um, let's see what this guy says. I've been a bit poked in assembly language on a number of projects. Uh, oh, it's obviously assembly. Instant feedback on what worked or didn't work. Ability to scrub and reload the microcontroller from scratch. Yeah. Stand in absolute awe of what they're able to do 15 billion miles away with a 45-hour turnaround time. Jeez Louise. Um, this guy. My understanding is that they have a complete copy of the hardware in a lab they can test new software with. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, that obviously makes sense. So they can troubleshoot and do software changes before sending it to Voyager. Helps a little on the timeline. Um, while that's usually true, the Voyager team no longer has a simulator. We don't have any type of simulator for this. We don't have a hardware simulator. We don't have any software simulator. There's no simulator with the FDS. No hardware where we can try it on the ground first before we send it. What? How do they not? What is... This thing. Oh, man. Anyways. That looked like it was going to be a good article. Shame on you, Wired. <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you. Uh, wow, though. Suzanne Dodd, Voyager Program Manager. How do they test their changes then? Exactly. What? Never tested in production? All the... Wow. Could you imagine sending... Like, if they can't test it, could you imagine sending a wrong data and then bricking the thing? You know? Like, it's not a, it's not a 3DS, you know? You're not bricking a 3DS out there. It's like this this crazy spacecraft that's so far that would take, I don't know, so long for another one to get there. I'm um, speaking of that. What about New Horizons? Is New Horizons not also going to be an interstellar uh, craft eventually? Correct me if I'm wrong on that. This is insane, though. That would be, um, you know, if you've ever sent something to a lot of people at once and you can't really send it back, you know, kind of like mass emailing or... Uh, whatever post or something like that where a lot of people are going to see it. You know, that, 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 that dread, that anxiety you have right before you hit the send button or the go or whatever, you know, or, or, you know, if you're doing anything that's high stakes and it's like, you've done all this work and you got to hit go. And like, that's your only chance. Could you imagine sending the code to Voyager and like, you just have this one chance you send it and that's all you get. And then it doesn't work. I mean, pfft. You're the guy, 46 years this thing's been in interstellar space, and you're the guy who just messed it up. I mean, help me out of that one. Help me out of that one. Although, to work on that team would be incredible. Anyways, guys, I feel like I'm literally just rambling at this point. But um, if you like this video, please like it. Um, subscribe if you're new here and you don't know uh, who I am or what's going on. Much adventure. I play space games. I talk about space stuff. That's about it. Uh, if you guys want to treat yourself, go and, and watch my oldest video from like four years ago or five years ago. I think it's me playing uh, Indiana Jones on the NES. So that's a little uh, little sneak peek for you there. So go and do that uh, for whatever reason, if you're so inclined. <laughs> um, and otherwise, uh, yeah. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm doing this thing. I'm I'm trying a 30 day, 30 videos, 30 days, one video a day. No matter what it is, we're gonna put it out there. So join me for the ride. I hope you guys enjoy it. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day.